Welcome to video two. In this video, we'll look at creating a script to control our marble. So let's start right away with creating a new folder to put our scripts in. So again, just right clicking here, create folder, and I'm going to call this scripts. It's always a good idea to have things well organized. So clicking into the scripts folder, I'm going to create a script. And again, you can either right click or here, and we're going to do a C sharp script. We can call this uh, barbel movement and just press enter there. Double click on it and it will open up a new program. By default, it will run Visual Studio. You might have a different version on your computer than I have. And once it opens up here, it will be a place for us to script our game. Once it's loaded up, this is what you see. It is running the Unity engine here. So these are just things that are brought in so that we could run with Unity. Um, you'll see the name here, Marble Movement. Don't worry about this mono behavior. It gets a little bit more complex. And there are two functions at the moment, Start and Update. We'll talk about those in a moment. First, what we want to do is be able to control the player. In order to do that, we will require a rigid body. I'm going to make this public, but generally I would make this private. Making it public lets us view it. So I'm going to call it rigid body, and you can see that it's helping me out here. So I'm just going to press enter, and we're going to call this RB. And what we'll do is actually go back into Unity and talk a little bit about the rigid body. So in Unity, and clicking on your marble, if you want something to react to physics, you have to add a rigid body to it. If I lifted this up so that it's floating in the air and I hit play, which allows the game to play, the ball or the marble just stays in the air, doesn't fall down. If we want it to react to physics, we need to add a physics component. So under add component in the inspector, search for rigid body. And you'll notice there's a rigid body and rigid body 2D. We are working in 3D, so click rigid body. It allows you to adjust things such as mass, using gravity, and so on. We won't touch anything there. We will just hit play and see how it responds. Once it figures out what it's doing, and you can see that the object dropped to the ground. Good. We have physics on the game. Heading back to the code, we have created a variable that will hold the rigid body, but we have to put the rigid body into it. In the start menu, or sorry, in the start function that will begin um, only when the game starts, we will create a spot for the rigid body where we are going to assign this get component rigid body. What this will do is find the rigid body on the, um, on, the, on the marble and put it in there. Let's just take a look at that working. So what I'm going to do here is make sure I save my code. You always have to save your code before you go back to Unity. Go into Unity. The next thing I have to do is add this script to Unity here. So what, or sorry, to the marble. So I'm going to grab the script and throw it on here somewhere. Well, it opened up. There we go. So now the script should be on there. Let me just close that up. And what we'll notice here is that it says RB. That's the variable we created. And then at the moment it says none rigid body. So what it's saying is that we don't know what the rigid body is, but it's going to be a rigid body. When I hit play here, what you'll notice is that it finds the rigid body and puts it in. There it is. So it's found the rigid body component and now it has a reference to it. Later on, we will use that rigid body to move the ball. Let's go back and uh, talk a little bit about creating our movement. We're simply going to use the keyboard here. Because we're using physics, instead of update, which means it gets updated once per frame, and a game can run 40, 60 frames per second, we're going to lower this uh, down to the fixed update. 
And fixed update means that it only checks it 20 times per per second, basically. And that's good for physics, because that's what the physics does. It doesn't run at 40 or 60 frames per second. It just runs at the fixed update rate. We're going to create two variables. Those two variables will uh, hold our input values. So we are going to call them, well, they're going to be floats. So they're going to be decimal numbers. And one's going to be move horizontal. And we're going to set that to being the input dot get axis and the horizontal keys. Make sure this is capitalized here, horizontal. And we'll explain that in a minute. Same thing. So that will move the left and right. We want it to move up and down as well. So we're going to call that the move vertical. And input, again, same idea. And instead of horizontal, we are going to call this axis vertical. Now, before we go back and sort of see how this is going, let us just take a look at these in um, in our in our game. So I'm going to do what's called a debug.log. And we won't do both of them here. We'll just do the one, move horizontal. And what that's going to do is let us see what the values are. So remember, save your work here before you go back to Unity. Go to Unity, and I had a little error there before. Let's just see if that's all fixed. That's gone. If you do have an error, it will pop up down in the bottom left, and you can double click on that, and that brings up your console. It's good to have our console here as well, because we're going to see a few things. So I'm going to hit play. Now we haven't caused any pushing or anything yet, so I don't really expect anything to happen. But you can see there's this zero being updated. Right, so it's doing this multiple times, okay, as the game plays. Now, your move horizontal are your left and right arrows on your keyboard. So I'm going to press the left key. And what you'll notice is that number went from 0 to negative 1. When I'm pressing the left key, there's a negative 1 value. Let go goes back to 0. If I press the right key, can you guess what it's going to be? You're right. It is a positive 1 because it's going in the opposite direction. Now, just to explain where these keys are coming from, just going to stop that there. Um, under do, 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 project settings, I believe, there are the input manager. And you have a variety of axes. Number of these are presets. Horizontal is there. And you can see it's mapped to different keys, left and right arrows, and also the A and D keys. You can modify these if you wish. There's vertical as well. And you can actually add your own. So there's space for there. There's a jump button, fire buttons, etc. And there's also ones there. These are a good start when you're creating your game for the first time. Now, let's actually get this ball moving. Go back to your script. In your script, uh, and we can comment this out. We don't need to see this anymore. So if you use two forward slashes, okay, that will comment this out. And that's why it's turned green here, just like these other ones are. What we're going to do is create a value that's going to hold our movement. And because it's operating in three dimensions, we're going to call it a vector three, and we'll call it movement. And what we're going to set it to is a new vector three. Don't worry too much about this. And what it's going to be is the X, Y, and Z. We know the X axis is going to be controlled by the move horizontal. At the moment, we are not having any vertical, so up and down, which is along the Y axis. So I'm going to leave that at zero. And I have to put an F there just to indicate that it's a float, not an integer value. And the last thing is move vertical, and that will be on the Z axis. So it runs x, y, z. Close that up. Now we still haven't actually pushed it. We've just created a, a value to do this. And I'm going to debug log this just so you can see it as well. And we'll get to that. Whoops. Yep. Yeah, movement. There we go. Let's just get to the push as well. So the last thing I'm going to do here is rb.addForce. 
So what this is doing is it's grabbing the rigid body. I'm going to add a force to it. And the force that I'm going to use is called movement. Semicolon at the end and just making sure it all works there. OK, save it. So I'm going to go Control S this time. And then I'm going to go back to Unity and hit play. So once I hit play here, a couple things that we'll check out. One is in the debug log, instead of just one zero appearing, now we have three zeros. Zero, zero, zero. X, Y, Z. And as I start moving my left key, we'll notice that, and the ball's moving, we'll notice that it's moving towards the left. Look at the bottom screen there. And that's because we pushed it, okay? If I go to the right, you'll notice now it's a positive one on the x-axis. I let go, it goes back to zero. I'm gonna stop it basically, just press to the left a little bit and get it to basically stop before it falls off. And if I press the up or down arrows, again, um, if I press the up arrow, it's gonna be positive on the z-axis and then negative on the z-axis when I go the other way towards me. And I can do both, right? I can have both going at once. So I've got negative one, positive one, and I can move it around. Good. All right. Last little thing we'll do here, just stop it there, is we'll just change the speed. At the moment, it's a pretty slow um, um, speed. It's kind of a little painful to play. So I'm going to go back into my script. Under here, I'm going to set this to be public. And we'll just set it as to be an integer. And we will set this to be called speed. And this will just give us an ability to change the speed. So I'm going to come down here. And instead of doing just movement, I'm going to do movement times speed. That will just speed it up, as they say. Control S to save. Going back to Unity. And then what I'm going to do here is hit play, and there's going to be a problem. I'm going to hit play, and I'm going to try to move the ball, and it doesn't move. Even though the keys are still working, I can see that in the debug log. But what's happened here is that I have got, it's a little hard to see with this in the way, there we are, speed is set to 0. Okay, I'm going to set that to 10. I'm going to go back into my play window. Make sure you're in your play window. And now you can see the ball moves a lot more smoothly. So we're just multiplying the speed. We're really just multiplying the force. We called it speed, but we're really just pushing this ball with greater force, therefore causing better or greater acceleration. OK, um, one thing to be careful of, if I hit play here, so the game ends, it goes back to 0. So if I want to permanently change it, permanently, quote unquote, I have to make sure I'm out of play mode, then I can make the change. And then when I play it again, it will be set to 10. And then when I stop, it will be um, still at 10 there. Okay, that's good for here. Make sure you save your scene. Okay, so just hit save there. And we're good. And uh, when we come back, we will look at uh, the camera. And just to recap what we did here, we were able to add a script, and this got our ball moving. Good work.